Hola amigos, it is Cal again and this is the video I finally promised to make on uh, synchronizing the starter valves on a 6th generation, that's a 2002 to 2009 and above VFR800. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you how to lift your tank up, that should be pretty obvious, you know, two screws there, make sure your seat's off first, prop it up. Um, I'm using just a couple of uh, extension bars um, from my socket set, but you can use the uh, uh, chain adjuster tool that's in your toolkit, which is uh, in the back of the bike here, if you want to use that. If you do use that, it clips into the holes up here, that's where it ends up holding up the bike, holding up the tank that is. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is get the airbox off, so I'll come back and do Before we take my airbox off, worth noting a couple of little customizations I've got. No, I still use the flapper valve, unlike everyone else, seems to think it's the best thing since sliced bread. Anyway, uh, no pair valves, so I've closed up the pair valve there, and uh, the power valve connector, solenoid connector is also disconnected. Other than that, the airbox is stopped. Alright, intake stacks are off. Now, the only thing holding the airbox on now is nothing. You can basically lift it up, but you can't remove it because there's a few things connected to it. First thing is the map sensor. Uh, that's that big square block back there. We need to disconnect the vacuum hose you'll see at the bottom, going into the bottom of the map sensor, and the electrical hose. Uh, electrical plug, I should say. The next thing is the vacuum line, if I can get some light in there for this, right there for the flapper valve. So there's the solenoid electrical connection, sorry, as well as the, as the vacuum line. So we need to remove those two. And underneath the air box is the intake air temperature sensor. So I'll see if I can give you guys some light and I'll pull out or lift up the air box. Right, just a slight wiggle, just enough to get it loose. And if we look underneath, let's see if we can get some light under there. You'll see there's your IAT center connector, you've got to pull that. First thing I'll do with the map sensor over here is, ooh, let's get some focus there. I'll actually remove the vacuum hose and then the electrical connection, and then I'll do the same thing for the flapper valve. All right, airbox is off, and these are my throttle bodies. You can see I've connected my vacuum hoses from each intake port up to my synchronization tool. The hoses I've used are the ones which go to that four-way, five-way joiner piece just there. You can just see it underneath the um, shaft here. That's it. Which normally goes to the map sensor. This is a non-California bike model. That is the only vacuum hose available on each intake port for you to use for synchronization. You basically have to disconnect the map sensor, uh, which includes electrically, and on the vacuum hose. The reason I say it's a good idea to leave it disconnected and not try and get funky by say plugging the flapper valve vacuum hose into the map sensor just so you get a map signal is because the map sensor is used to alter the fuel flow. If you are synchronizing your throttle bodies you'll be changing the intake vacuum which will change uh, the signal being sent to the ECU which will cause the ECU to change the fuel which will affect the idle speed. You don't want that. You basically want the computer to be operating from a static, uh, non-dynamically alterable, like uh, limp home mode basic map while you're doing the tuning. Uh, that way you will end up with the most accurate synchronization. The other important thing to do is to make sure any loose vacuum hoses are plugged. That means the flapper valve vacuum hose right there. I've just shoved in a, a punch which has a uh, tapered end into that hose to seal it up. You could use anything like a bolt or a large nail or whatever you like really, as long as you seal the vacuum. If you don't do that, what will happen is this particular cylinder here will require massive amounts of adjustment to get the synchronization right. And then when you button everything up and you plug that, what which was once a loose hose back into the flapper valve, it'll be a shit synchronization because this one will go way out again. So yeah, make sure all loose vacuum hoses are plugged and that you have no vacuum leaks. 
The next interesting thing is because we have the BAP sensor disconnected, the bike will not want to start. It will idle badly, you'll have to crack open the throttle for about three to five, maybe 10 seconds before the bike will idle. Once it does and stays running, you wanna get it warm. You do not want a cold engine. The reason is, the if it's cold, the fast idle wax unit will be pulling on the throttle plate, on the, sorry, on the idle adjustment plate down there, and you won't be able to set the idle speed with your idle speed adjustment screw. So, heat her up, get the engine warm, and then start synchronizing. Alright, engine ready to start. Uh, I have secured my vacuum gauges here with an hockey strap so they don't fall into the engine and uh, knock over my strut and then make the tank collapse. Not telling you how I know that can happen. Anyway, uh, we're going to start the bike because the map sensor is disconnected. It may or may not uh, have a trouble starting and holding an idle. Uh, if it's already detected that the map sensor is disconnected before I start it, it should get the hint. So. There we go. Alright, should flash a map error code soon. Yep, alright, so it's flashing the fuel injection error. Oh, that's the actual code it's flashing there, telling you what's wrong. And if you read those codes appropriately, they would be map uh, sensor vacuum hose and map sensor electrical connections. Alright, here we go. I'm going to adjust the uh, gauges here. So that they just only just stop vibrating. So I'm screwing this in. And back, get back out until it just starts to vibrate again. We can test it by flipping the throttle. That one's a bit too soft. That one's a bit too loose. again. What have we got? 19, 20, 20, 20. Uh, obviously I'll have to keep doing that until the engine heats up, but basically the manual tells you to have them within 20 millimeters of mercury each. Uh, so let's see, what are we measuring those in? They are in centimetres of mercury, so they were within around about 20 millimetres, I think the worst was 18 um, in terms of the lowest, but yeah we can tweak that to bring it up. So what I'll go and do now is I'll get the engine nice and warm, um, ready to be tuned, ready to be synchronised, sorry. Okay, bike is warm, ready to sync. So first thing you need to do when you're bike is ready to be synchronized is start the bike again keep it running and uh, try and get your idle speed initially to the required 1200 rpm plus or minus 100 rpm how do you do that accurately well you can just use the gauge and take a punt uh, I'm using power commander software because I have a power commander and it's more accurate than gauge so I'll be using that to set the idle speed initially and then to actually perform the adjustment uh, to do the adjustment you're going to be uh, I'll just come around the bike you want to be adjusting those little brass nuts. You will need a 7mm, if I recall correctly, or 6mm open-ended spanner, or you can just use your fingers um, by clicking them. You can't really see that, can you? No, you can't. But yes, you can actually lift them, you can pull them out. Actually, I'll find my other throttle body over here. You can pull them out and spin them gently. It's actually quite hard to turn them on the little notches because it's quite stiff, but you can pull them out and do that. And as you turn them and adjust them, you will notice 
the vacuum changing. Now, on this bike so far, everything seems okay apart from this one right here, which if I've plugged it in correctly is left rear. So I need to be working on that little nut there. All right, I'll get the bike started. And uh, knowing that she's warm, and set the idle speed first. I'll make sure that it goes back up to 65 before I do anything. As you can see, because the engine's colder, we've got higher vacuum going on. And as it drops the idle speed, being warmed up and the idle speed drops, you will notice that the vacuum drops. And that's constantly flashing the map error code. I'll show you in a different video how to clear out your error codes. Essentially, there's a plug on the ECU behind this panel that you short and uh, cycle the engine a certain number of ways and uh, shorting that wire and disconnecting it, that'll clear out the codes. We won't worry about that now. All right, so 60, 66. Everything's bang on about 20. Except that one. Oh, actually that one's a bit low too. By the way, the non-adjustable one in my case is this one. Front right. So I'm going front left, rear left, Front right, rear right. Idle speed's a little high. See it's averaging around about 400 there. I'll drop a little bit more. You'll see it drop under 500 a bit. Pretty happy with that. Right, and we're just uh, this one here. Screwing it in makes the vacuum drop, so I need to undo it. See the engine notes already changed. Gone too far now. So I'm seeing the focus there at 18, about 20, about 19, a bit lower. So now you go and set the idle speed again. It's too low, see? Bring it up. this front one now. Whoop. Whoop. There you go. 19, 19, 19. That right. RPM. Pretty good. I apologize for the uh, crappy camera angles. I don't have anyone helping me to do the filming, so um, camera's getting pointed into very sloppy directions while I'm actually doing this. But yeah, so um, we've set the idle speed, the engine's hot, we've synchronized them all to in what looks to be within 10 millimeter of each other. We'll um, start again and confirm. Got it settled. 19. 20-ish, 19. I could spin that one out a little bit. Oh, bad camera angles. 
vehicles again. That's looking pretty good. Okay, well that was fun. <coughs> I really apologise for the terrible camera angles. But as you can see the basic process is start the bike, get the idle speed up, once it's hot, have a look at your gauges, know which one's a non-adjustable one, because effectively when you spin that idle speed up you'll be changing the vacuum on this one primarily. Um, that's the only way you can change the vacuum on this one and then the rest of them you synchronise to that because this is uh, the front right which is the one which you can't adjust. Get it within 20, millim 20 millimetres of mercury. It's trickier on this gauge because they're such a wide scale. Um, we're talking uh, basically between uh, one of those dots and the next large one. <coughs> but uh, once you do that, get them in sync, get the idle speed up again, come back and check them again. If any have gone out, check them. Uh, give them a slight adjustment. Be aware as well when you adjust these it's possible for you to spin it a little bit and get the nut stuck on a, a raised ridge rather than in a groove which basically means that it might look right but as the bike vibrates it might pop and, and, and finally seat and slightly send that uh, that synchronization out. Now remember it's not a massive 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 issue if it's a little bit out. The reason that I say this is because the vacuum synchronization here is only really affecting when you first just, just crack the throttle. Alright? Once that throttle gets beyond, you know, just about, God, about there, basically it's much easier for the air to flow through those butterflies than it is to go through these valves. So essentially, the synchronization on those valves, the further you go past a closed throttle, i.e., the further you open the throttle, the less important that synchronization becomes. It's just for when you just crack that throttle open.